Today we have one of the most requested brands to review and it's Sangmont. I got two bags from them. One is the small chocolate bag. It's used by a friend before our inspection. So this is going to be slightly different than our other reviews. And the other one is their popular design Luna. It's brand new in the box. I just received it. We're going to open them up and inspect in detail, then compare our findings to brand's claims. I'm really excited about this project because many of you hinted that this was another value brand coming into the leather market by commenting under my Polan and Stradbeer videos. So I'm curious to see what's going to come out of this inspection today. First impressions about this small chocolate bag. It touches too plasticky. I'm a little concerned. I checked the website and my concerns are a little bit heightened because the material says sponge composite fine calf leather. My feelings tell me it's not even leather. And for the interior, it's even more confusing. It says Chinese silk and sheet pattern microfiber leather. And I'm pretty sure the interior lining is not leather. It's fake leather. Finally, the matte gold finish vintage effect hardware fade resistant, which failed immediately because this bag was used a few months and it already faded. So it's not fade resistant. It's pretty low quality hardware on this bag. So I have quite a bit of concerns for this one, but we're going to see how it turns out. So the first impressions about the Luna bag is exact opposite of the first bag. I love the touch and feel of this leather, the elegance of the form. This one actually gets me excited. Uh, when I read the descriptions on the website, I'm only concerned about the lining part, which says interior lining microfiber leather. I never like microfiber and leather in the same sentence. They are not uh, compatible. People think it's leather, especially when it looks like leather. It's actually a lie. So the lining here is, it says interior lining microfiber leather. This one is neither. It's not microfiber. It's not leather, it's just PU leather, it's fake leather, whatever you call it, it's vinyl. Um, this one, if, if you said microfiber to this part only, I would say like, okay, maybe, because it feels like microfiber fabric, but there's nothing leather about it. So the interior lining description is not accurate. I would love to see that reflect a lot more accuracy here. And then hardware says the long shoulder strap features stainless steel, vacuum, electroplated hardware, uh, fade resistance. So this one actually feels like it. This hardware feels a lot better than the first bag. So actually there's a lot more promising aspects I can feel on this bag than the other one. But now we're gonna start dissecting both and compare our findings and share with you here. Real quick, if you like these dissection reviews, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so we get to explore the leather wars together. As I open this bag up, I see that the craftsmanship inside is clean enough. It's above average for sure. I don't see messy, dirty things left out. The interior materials are above average quality. I don't see a concern or complaint at this price point. I applied acetone to remove the finish on the main leather and it was kind of tricky. I see a super sanded down grain on this leather. It is actually leather. Um, it's super thin. It's insanely, insanely thin with very fine grain left on it. So there is a very corrective finish on top. So it, it could be a young calf skin, but it's not your super fine calf because of its grain beauty. This is heavily finished, very plasticized. I think that's why the, the hand touch is not appealing outside. And quite interesting finish, actually. It's nothing of a high caliber leather in my perspective. As we apply acetone onto the interior lining, we melt away the top layer plastic part and find kind of the fabric backing. So it is by no means leather, which was claimed to be microfiber leather and sheep grain or something, which is not even sheep looking, it's the goat grain looking. So this description is completely false. It's fake PU vinyl, whatever you can call it. It's a man-made material. Hardware is a pretty typical Zamak with very low grade plating actually. It already start uh, fading away the coating. It's definitely not fade resistant as it was described. As we open up this bag, I can see that this shape as it seems from outside, it's a lot more complex to design, structure, engineer. The techniques they used here is a lot more sophisticated. This bag is really something um, special. It's, it's a nice craft, beautiful 
materials inside, clean workmanship. I really, I really like what they did here. So this is a day and night different from the first bag uh, we just opened. As expected, acetone removed the finish, the tin layer protective finish on top of this beautiful cowhide. I see the grain, I see the full grain. It's absolutely phenomenal. That's why the, the touch, feel and look is there. This is one of the really, really good leathers I have seen in this space. Perfect balance of finish to protect the leather, but still give us chance to enjoy the naturalness and the chaotic pattern of the natural leather grain. As we can see here, the microfiber leather disclaimer as the lining material is, is not accurate here. It's basically fake PU leather vinyl, whatever you call it. We melted away the top plastic and you see the backing fab fabric here. So whenever this is the case and it looks like leather, I rather brands not mention leather at all. This is not leather, it's man-made vinyl material. And the hardware on this one is much better than the previous bag. It has a thin layer of lacquer on top and the coating is a lot more durable. I try to scratch it to fade it away, but it doesn't work. Probably it's a stainless steel with a lot more durable than new technique uh, PVD coating which will last for a long time without fading. I see about five square foot of beautiful cowhide being enough for this project. My leather estimate is about $25. Good hardware, around $15 in my opinion. And the assembly labor is about $55 in China to put a bag like this together. So my total estimate to make a bag of this caliber is $95 in China. For the black chocolate bag, I see about four or five square foot of leather being enough again. My leather estimate is much lower this time, $13. Hardware is around $10, assembly about $40. In total, $63 should give us a bag of that caliber again in China. Given my estimate of $63 for the chocolate bag, the retail price of $279 shows a multiplier a little above four. On the Luna bag though, the sales price of $350 compared to my $95 Cost estimate shows a multiplier less than four. I think being a fairly new brand, about 10, 11 years old at this point, they're trying to find their identity and ideal position in the market. But if they're heading towards Luna, I think it's the perfect path. Great leather. I love their price multiplier. For the 350 price I paid, I am extremely happy what I got for the Luna bag. But on the other hand, the $279, the chocolate bag, I would stay away. I don't like the leather, I don't like the design, I don't like the hardware. It looks too much like those cheap bags made in China with PU materials. I, I don't see any point of spending that much money, whereas these alternatives are possible in the same brand family. One thing I'm not really happy about this review on Sangman is the way they describe their leathers, especially the interior material, which in both bags is not leather, but described as microfiber leather very deceptive because it's a material looks like leather it's not and it has leather inside which makes a lot of people think it's real leather and that's why it's not accurate so that's a very small improvement they can do very quickly and it will be better service to their customers and as promised we placed these two bags onto Leatherworks brand matrix since it's a wider range we see these two locations in the marketplace position for the brand one is super close to Polans and Stratberries of the world. Other one is a little bit too closer to the, the balance line, which that's why I say I wouldn't go with this brand. I'm gonna do more products from this brand since now it's, it's a huge gap and I, I'm not sure where the brand stands with this kind of range. Um, so we're gonna continue exploring where Sangmont is going. There is a promise here, there is a potential. Hopefully they take that path. And as always, until next time, stay leather tamed.